Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sounds of Her Love, episode number 12, I believe, is the episode we are on. Yes, I can count, because 6 plus 5 is 11, and we are on the next one, so it means 12. Math is fun. All right, um, this is pretty epic, because last time, uh, Carrie's dad basically said, hey, take my daughter, like, just just take her, I, and I was like, okay, I will. So that's where we're at. We're we're going on a little, little little date action with Carrie after school, of course, because that is, you know education comes first. All right, let's get into things. The continued walk brings Carrie into my sight, causing my heart to speed up as I watch her diligently play with her clothes as if trying to make herself appear presentable. One thing which is made apparent is the distinct change of her style. Her hair, rather than being down in the cute braided manner I've become used to seeing, now flows downward towards the floor, each strand glowing in the morning sun. The noticeable pair of glasses she wears seems to be missing as well. It's a striking contrast to how she normally looks, but it's not as if I haven't seen her like this before. The talk we had in her bedroom is all too memorable. As I approach her, Carrie looks towards me with a smile. Rather than expressing surprise at my appearance, something about her seems different, disregarding the obvious change in image. Good, good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Y you look n nice, C Carrie. All those stutters, that's pretty epic. I struggle with getting the words through my mouth, as Carrie stands right before me. It wasn't like this yesterday, but now that I know these feelings thoroughly, seeing her overwhelms me. Thank you. I jumped the gun on that one, sorry. I wanted to try something different. Ending her sentence with a beam of happiness, Carrie looks towards me as she holds one arm with the other. It's almost as if she's nervous as well, both of us sharing the same feelings. Looking over her again, I feel as if this look suits her as much as her braids did. Admittedly, she did look cuter before, but today she seems just a little more mesmerizing. Maybe it's because of the affection I carry for her, but I know seeing her like this is something I will enjoy. That's if she keeps the look. One thing is on my mind though. How are you supposed to see without your glasses? says the man who doesn't know contacts exist. Carrie blushes, looking down at the floor in embarrassment. I'll wear them in school. Okay, maybe I was wrong. It's just that I'm a little short-sighted is all. I can see you fine. That's all that matters. Oh my gosh, dude. The, the fact that a female is saying to me, like, she can see us, and that's all that matters, man. That that just that just melts my heart right now. A girl doesn't. She's never said that to me. No one. No one once. Gosh, dude. Why isn't Carrie real? Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm happy, but I'm also like uh, realizing that that I I don't have a Carrie of my own. Let Let's continue on. Her final line sends a flood of emotions through my mind, causing me to feel flustered. An expression which connects the two of us. Carrie looks at me timidly, though I can feel I can feel something in her eyes. Is this the difference? Did he tell her? Shall we get going then? Y yeah, let's go. Let's fucking go. The two of us walk side by side, something which we would usually be doing. Now, however, I feel as if that bridge between us has gotten shorter and shorter. The days when Carrie was away, feeling sad, are now behind us. Her newfound happiness seems to give me enough of an indication that she knows she now knows that she no longer needs to feel troubled, that she has a future here. Today I plan on crossing that bridge, the bridge to her heart. And Terabithia. Never read that book, or saw the movie. I don't know why I remember that. Uh, the final minutes of class soon approach, 
my heartbeat acting as a metronome as time continues forward, soon to face the lunch bell. I haven't been able to think about anything but Carrie all day. After seeing the cute wave she gave me after we split up to go to our respective classes, I've been dying to see her again. Upon hearing the chimes that mark the start of lunch, I stand up quickly enough to gain the attention of several classmates around me. I don't have time to be concerned about it though. The more time I spend here, the less time I spend with Carrie. Walking out the door, I expect to see her cute face waiting for me as she usually does. However, in the corridor stands only the usual crowds of students waiting for their friends. Carrie isn't one of them. Oh no. Instinct tells me to check her classroom, taking me down the corridor towards their room. I could have sworn that some of the people back there were in her class, though. There you are. Oh. I thought I had missed you. Oh, God, she's cute. Carrie approaches from behind, startling me slightly as I had assumed she would have been in her classroom rather than trailing after me. So, wow, this time she came after us. Times are a-changing, folks. Wh where were you? Oh, sorry. I was in a call with my father. Shall we head to the cafeteria? Weirdly, Carrie seems even happier than she was this morning. It's strange. I would have assumed that Mr. Irwood had told her earlier, given by how energetic she seemed when compared to yesterday. However, now it's like I'm facing a Carrie filled with a newfound spirit. Just what did he tell her during that call? Carrie and I turn down the corridor to begin our time together at lunch. She still carries a beam of happiness across her face. It's a nice sight, though I'm used to seeing her smiling timidly with a blush. If he did tell her, I would have assumed she would have told me. Or maybe not. Carrie doesn't even know that I'm aware of the custody issue, so maybe that's why she hasn't said anything. Either way, I'm glad that Carrie is finally free of worry and can be happy again. The only issue now is to get closer to her. Close enough for her to hear my feelings. As we enter the cafeteria, it's hard for me to act calm. My mind continues to spin whenever I look in her direction. It shouldn't have taken this long to get to the cafeteria, but maybe my sense of time is flowing ever so slower. It's hard to act calm around her now that my feelings are in control, and given that there are no issues stopping our hearts from binding, it's just a matter of time before I let them out. Going by her father's words, she must be feeling something too. She must be forcing herself to act with passion, as if to make an impression. It's not really needed, but it's cute to see her do so. If her father can be trusted, then us coming together is an inevitability. Oh, that was a poor choice of words. Uh, eventually, school ends on a rather usual note. If it wasn't for my outing with Carrie, I would usually be feeling pretty apathetic at this point. During lunch, neither of us really spoke to the other, despite Carrie's prior confidence. I think inside, both of us know that getting our feelings out is going to be a difficult task. Hopefully this date can provide the groundwork for us to forge our relationship. The school bell rings, pumping up the speed of my heart. I now face something I've wanted for a while, something I've longed for. Hopefully, I can get it done effectively. Hopefully, I can bring us together. Outside stands Carrie, waiting for me as usual with a slight blush on her face. She knows as much as I do that we're about to embark on a journey that'll change us. It's whoever gives in first that'll truly set things off. Shall we get going? Y yeah. I never told her where I wanted to take her. All I, says, all I said was, would you like to go somewhere with me? Hindsight tells me that choosing something for us to do, just to set an atmosphere, would have been a good idea. However, I think that neither of us really care that much. We just want to spend time together. Starting our slow pace through the corridor, I feel something grasp my hand. Oh. 
Did she really? Sorry. I I got used to you taking me places like that. Dude, premarital handholding. This game has it all. Oh my gosh, I'm finna bust. Oh, dude. I just re I I long to hold a girl's hand. Oh my gosh, dude, I freaking need it. Oh, man. Okay, uh, back to the game. Uh, oh. Nervousness strangles my voice. I can't get anything out. She grabbed our hand. Oh my gosh. Part of me wants to just take hold of her hand. Part of me wants to tell her right now, I love you. Though something is stopping me from doing it. Something stopping me from moving forward. What is that something, I ask? Hmm. We arrive in the center of town together, after spending a long period of the journey passively giving each other an occasional glance. An awkward, but somehow enjoyable atmosphere, one that's slowly been between us. One that's always been between us. Eh, those, those two words don't... No, they're not similar. There's never been a moment where I haven't enjoyed spending time with her. It's just now there's a lot more attention on that very aura that crosses between us and our hearts. The late afternoon sun provides a canopy of tranquility. The two of us remain silent as we look towards one another. I'd love to know what she's thinking right now. It can't be any different than what's going through my mind. Carrie is the one to break the silence. Well, we're here. What should we do? Although I was the one to invite her out here, on the advice her father gave, I still have no idea as to what I should do with her. Anything that involves spending time with her, I'm bound to find pleasurable. Is there anything you want to do, Carrie? I think I've just managed to control the une uneasiness in my voice. I just want to spend time with you. Why can't a girl say that to me? <laughs> oh, dude, I love this game. It's it's a really good game. I, I'm having a good time. Both of us have come to the same conclusion. Wait, let me repeat that. Both of us have come to the same conclusion. We really don't care what it is, what we do, as long as we do it together. Carrie blushes at her own statement, causing me to feel a sense of warmth inside. This feeling is usually described as having butterflies in the stomach. They must be getting they must be going pretty crazy then. Each second we spend together causes me to adore her more, a deep sense of affection flowering from the seed she had placed in my heart. Okay, should we go for a walk? Carrie nods her head, looking at me with a sense of emotion. Her eyes are fixed on me, though I can't deny mine being fixed on her. We start to walk again, making our way further into town. Carrie's golden hair flows down her back, ruffled around periodically by slight breezes passing. It makes her all the more attractive. Oh, dude, this is the spot. Look, look at those trees. Uh, I'm going to say those are pink. Uh, I have a blue light filter on, of course, but uh, th those those just look a beautiful landscape. Look at that bench. We're about to just confess our love for Carrie. I can feel it. I, it's it's coming. After a quick water break, that is. Alrighty. Our unplanned stroll together takes us to a part of town famed by students as the date spots numerous couples can be enjoying the view can be seen okay let's try again numerous couples can be seen enjoying the view of the city instances of people falling in love i want to tell you something it's happening it's happening carrie walks ahead of me quickly turning back to face me with her red face instead of directing her eyes away as she normally would she locks them with mine. Oh, dude, it's happening, it's happening, come on. I wanted to thank you for being there for me. Recently, I've been going through a lot. 
Words flow from Carrie's mouth, a river of emotion with the source deep within her heart. I have a feeling as to what she's going to tell me, though I appreciate being able to hear each and every word. The experience I knew she had gone through told, her, told from her own perspective, in her very words. You knew things weren't going well with my parents. They were going through a divorce. I nod in response to her words. I don't want to interrupt her. My mother wanted to take me away. It hurt me. I thought I'd have to leave my father. I thought I'd have to leave you. I didn't want to do that. And now, I'm happy. I was told I was going to stay with my father. I'm happy because I finally get to tell you. Oh my gosh, it's happening, it's happening. Dude. Nice. Let's just savor the moment for a second. Nice. Okay. Carrie once again lifts her eyes, looking towards me with a sense of embarrassment on her face. Her feelings real. <laughs> her feelings released from her heart. Inside, it makes me happy. One of us was bound to let our feelings known to the other at some point today. Now that it's finally happening, part of me feels content, overwhelmed with the emotion of love. Both my own and Carrie's. It's been like that for a while. You gave me the opportunity to speak to someone. To feel this way. That's why I had to tell you. Carrie stands still, almost frozen as she breathes heavily. I watch her tremble slightly as she continues looking in my direction, playing with the end of her hair as it rests down her side. That's a thumbnail if I've ever seen one. A small gust causes her skirt to flap around, quickly pushed down by her left hand. Now that she's reached out to me, I feel as if it's time to do the same. To tell her how I feel. Those are some really thick thighs. I like the music too. I'm happy, Carrie. Because, well, I love you too. Carrie looks up in surprise, her face still reddened, shines in the afternoon. I <laughs> I'm flustered. Her face, still reddened, shines in the afternoon sun from where she had been sweating from nervousness. After spending time with you, I realized what it is I was looking for. I was able to find something in those moments, the moments I've enjoyed. That's why, Carrie, I want to thank you too. Both of us here, both of us here together, have managed to become different people. Before Carrie was a timid girl, her feelings, her thoughts locked inside because of bad experiences. Being bullied, her parents going through a divorce, all of it was painful for her. To think that she managed to find something in me, it's a wonderful feeling. On the other hand, before I met her, I was just the new transfer. Nobody really showed much interest in me. Meeting her gave me the chance to connect with someone, to change my outlook on life. That's why I'm glad I met her. I'm so happy. I can't believe it. Don't worry, you're not dreaming. 
Carrie smiles at me, a smile more than one of simple gratitude. It's one filled with love. I'm glad our feelings are mutual. Me too. I was going to confess to you today, but you beat me to the punch. <laughs> God, that laugh. Over the past two weeks, we've managed to form something together. It's a short amount of time when looking back, but I don't think I'll ever forget the events which have brought us together. This feels like the end of the game, and I'm assuming this is the good ending, unless a f an ambulance just comes out of nowhere and just, just plows us down. But uh, this, this is going pretty good. Uh, from meeting her by chance on the street, to being able to fall in love, it's a cliche, but it's one which I cherish. Both of us are happy, happy that we were able to make that connection. Now it's time for us to move forward, to forge a relationship. The events that troubled us are now in the past. What we have done, what we have to do now is clear. We have to be there for each other. An easy task considering how much we enjoy spending time together. In the end, we're glad. Glad that we were able to have one another. The sounds of our love. The girl I love. Carrie. Thank you. Nice. Thanks, DS Sands. You're a pretty cool cat, you know that? Amber Barril. Bar Amber Barril. That's, that's Carrie's voice actress. Well, cool. Um, yeah, that, that was the end of Sounds of Her Love. I, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the game. It, it seemed a bit short, uh, was it not? Or is that just me? I don't know. It, it just seemed like the 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 ending was very uh, abrupt. It was good though. Uh, don't get me wrong. Very good. The voice acting really made it. Uh, actually, hearing uh, Carrie speak to us really, really made the game stand out. And as I alluded to a few episodes ago, I did buy a DLC expansion for this game because uh, it was on sale for Memorial Day. So. There's going to be a whole new story, fellas, and I just hope the voice acting is on par, or at least at least half as good as it was uh, here, because uh, this, this this was a really good game. I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I hope you all did as well. This uh, this is a lot of numbers in this credit in the credit sequence. Thanks for playing. That's, you're, you know, you're welcome. Thanks for making the game. It feels so personal. I'm, th wait, I think this is the first time we got a good ending. <laughs> well, look at me. It only took me a few tries, a few games uh, to actually get a good ending. Uh, if we look here in the extra file in the CG gallery, looks like we missed something. I don't know how we could have missed something. But, uh, yeah, this was, uh, quite the sequence, uh, oh, um, yeah, we're gonna end, <laughs> this seems like a, a good ending spot, this, this was, I had a good time, I, I, I think I said that at least eight times, but, yeah, let, let me know what you guys thought of this playthrough, I, I just feel, feel all warm and fuzzy after that confession Carrie made to us. I know there's a neutral ending and a bad ending. I wonder how that turns out. Maybe I'll play through. I don't know if I'll record it because I feel like it's going to be very short and similar dialogue. So, but if you really want it, let me know. So thanks for watching. Thanks for making it this far. If you watched every episode in this playthrough, you are probably the most epic person in your city, at least in your district. But that's all I got to say on that front. Please like, comment, and subscribe for future playthroughs much, uh, much like this one, very similar in the near future. And as always, help me find a girlfriend, and bye bye